see my screen again, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. I just wanted to make sure that I know how to use Skype properly. <laughs> Um, okay, so you guys have, have, so this is basically where you're going to be managing all the devices in Intune. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a quick overview of this in, in the last couple minutes that we have here, um, just that so you have some familiarity with this and, and know where to go to access certain things. Um, so from a troubleshooting perspective, or actually let me just get you to there. So portal.azure.com is where you're going to want to go to access these resources. Is there an app for this and as well? I don't think there is now. Okay. Um, this is actually relatively, this, this portal for uh, managing Intune and Azure AD is relatively new within the past couple months. Um, so it, there's, there's not a lot of stuff in this, and it's actually technically still in preview uh, for Management 3 here, okay. even though it's mm -hmm. where you have to do everything. Um, so if you do that, you'll sign in with your worker school account. I'm already signed in, so it took me directly to it. Um, if you don't have Intune showing up in the sidebar, all you have to do is click this arrow, search for Intune, and you'll get it right here. Okay. If you want this to stay in your sidebar, just click the uh, the star right here, and it'll favorite it and add it here. Okay. So once we're in Tune, it'll take us to our overview. Uh, where you'll spend a lot of time probably is in devices, and this is just going to be an overview of all the devices and groups that are enrolled in the Intune platform. Um, on the first page, it'll give you an overview of your OS distribution. For this pilot, we should only be looking at Windows, but if you were also using this for managing MDM, et cetera, you'd also see other device types in here. Uh, so I'm going to go to all devices, and that'll pull us up a new paint here. So we'll see the three devices that we have enrolled. So your device, Chris the Test. You'll see it was enrolled with Daniel at King Student, um, and then the two testing devices that I have here. Um, you'll see that your device is shown as compliant because you got all of the policies and settings and everything pushed down. I missed a couple, so my device shows as non-compliant. Right now, that's not going to do anything, but when we turn on conditional access, um, anybody that is non-compliant will be able to access, like uh, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, et cetera, um, unless they are compliant. Uh, so if we pull up your device here, and we'll get a little bit more detail on that specific uh, device. So you'll see a serial number. Ownership is personal, and that's because we just did an ad worker school account. It's not Azure AD joined. Um, associated user, device model, last check in time, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, on a mobile device, we'd also have the phone number that was associated with that device. And then up here, you'll see remove company data. So this is where we'll do that selective wipe and remove device management and anything associated with the organization while leaving all of their personal data and anything locally on the device alone. Will that also uninstall class wanted, policy? I'm sorry, real quick. Will that also uninstall class policy? Or will that leave uh, it? It will not uninstall okay. class policy. That would have to be done as a separate operation on a device. Um, okay. So app installations at this point are, are independent of a device's enrollment status. If you want to remove that, you'll have to actually do a policy down there to, to, to push an uninstall of an application. All right. Um, and then you can also force a restart on a device or do a full factory reset if you need to for some reason. Um, properties, it shows up all the, the settings on the device in Intune. If you want to create device categories, you can do that and then assign them here. And then if you need to override the default uh, ownership setting, you can do that through here as well. Hardware gives you a summary of all of the, of all of the uh, information we've gathered about the device. So you can get the Wi-Fi Mac for troubleshooting. Um, Azure AD Register, Compliant, Exchange Active Sync, et cetera, all that shows up here. Um, when it was enrolled, last contact, and then just basic hardware information on the device. Uh, discovered apps, because we're in a personal mode here, we're not actually doing application discovery. If we were full Azure AD joined, we would be doing app discovery on the device and then getting a full list of everything installed. Um, compliance. I don't think we have any compliance policy pushed down, but so device configuration, you'll see we have the pilot update ring push down, state it succeeded, and pilot succeeded. If we drill in deeper, we can get specific information about the settings that are applied and whether or not that was successfully applied on the device and is enforced. So here, you know, you can't manually unroll the device. That will have to be done through the administrative console, mm -hmm. password, smart screen, et cetera. When you say full Azure AD joined, uh, what do you mean specifically by that again? So that means that the device, as opposed to being joined to Active Directory, the device would be joined and registered to Azure Active Directory, and so that would then be used as the primary form of authentication on the device. It's effectively like AD joining, but just up to the Office 365 tenant. Um, it marks the device as a corporate device. The accounts that users sign in with will be their Azure AD account, as opposed to signing in with whatever personal Microsoft account or local account on the device.
else they want to do, and then accessing corporate resources from there. And and Daniel, are we going that route, or we're sticking uh, with? We're I think we're just sticking with personal. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because if yeah, we, and, and so the, the, one of the big reasons why you'd want to do that in this particular scenario is if a user is Azure AD joined and it's signing in with their Azure AD account, when they leave, that account goes away, and so all of the data associated with it goes away. Okay. Um, so we have a couple minutes left here. So device configuration is the other tab you're going to be spending time in. This is where you create policies and profiles uh, and assign them out to uh, groups of users or devices. Um, so the main one we have here is our device restrictions policy. Excuse me, sorry. Uh, device restriction policies. So this is our base policy that we've configured. Um, you can see the platform is Windows 10 and later, last modified date. Uh, a place to put description or notes, so every time a user makes a change, I, I suggest that they log it here. And then you'll go into settings where you'll actually configure all of those uh, the, the options on devices. Um, so you'll see various, uh, there's a number of different sections here um, for configuring various types of Windows 10 policies. Uh, I'm just going to go into one of these in the interest of time, so you'll see password. It's, uh, it's all sliders, so required, not configured, etc. And then you can go in and um, enter certain features in here as well. So like password expiration, you can enter the number of days in there. Uh, it's very straightforward to use this kind of this portal um, to set basic Windows 10 policies. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? Um, not, not on that. I do have some more questions I would like to ask before, uh, before we're done with our, um, our Skype call. Okay. Um, real quick, the other thing, so th this will look the same for all types of policies, um, whether that's a um, configuration policy, compliance policy, um, conditional access, all of this stuff looks the same in this portal, and the, the methods are basically the same, so I won't go in for each one. Uh, to assign a policy, you go to the assignments tab and set the groups that you want to include. So we have this push down to every member of the Intune testing group. This will be the policy that they get. Um, you can set exclusions as well, so if you have certain members of Intune testing that shouldn't, get this policy, you can put that in here, mm -hmm. and you can create as many policies as you want and apply them to specific groups of users or devices. All right. All right. Um, so the software updates, this is where the update rings are configured. Uh, update rings, again, it's very straightforward. Everything looks the same. You can set specific settings in the policy and push it down to uh, specific groups. So those update settings are how we um, enforce the students to make sure they get their updates on time? Yes, correct. So if you look at your update settings on your on the testing device, you'll see that all of those settings are grayed out uh, because they've been uh, specified by uh, Intune. So there'll be there'll be a specific set of, of office hours effectively where the device won't reboot, and then we'll force a reboot and update installation outside of that. Try to just check for updates and see what it does. Yeah, it looks like I can. I don't see anything um, grayed out, but I don't have a whole lot of options showing. So I can check for updates. That's also possible. Okay, it, may have, it may have just hidden some of the options. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Because I don't, I don't. Too. Yeah, I don't have the usual options of like advanced or defer updates or anything like that. So, yeah, it looks okay. like what it's doing. Is just... it, it varies between um, um, versions of the exact UI. So, like on yeah, uh, this right one, out. if I pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I I found uh, advanced okay. options and I want to go in there. Uh, most of the stuff, deferred updates and. Um, other stuff that's all grayed out so good yep and then okay um so this stuff in here is pretty straightforward and we can set up another call to go over some of this i just wanted to make sure you had enough to start doing your pilot testing um intune roles gives you a bit to the ability to set up some rbac so if you wanted to give help desk uh the ability to do specific uh roles in here like read uh configurations on a device maybe do a um a restart, something like that, you can give them very granular permissions to do hmm. certain tasks. Okay. So, and are the, these are permissions inside the Azure portal? Inside the inside the admin portal here, yeah. So oh. these are for admins. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, global administrators on a three six on uh, Office three sixty five global administrators will automatically have full access to this. You can just delegate down um, specific administration tasks tasks to other users if you need to. Okay. That might be All good right. for our student. So that's everything I want to show you today. Um, what questions do you guys have? Um, my first uh, question is, uh, we're, we've been emailing back and forth about Windows Defender and uh, antivirus. So it sounds like currently we can't push out any of our own antiviruses. 
you did mention, however, that you do have control over Windows Defender, and just doing research online, yeah. it seems like everyone's saying that it's 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 not a bad antivirus, but you could do better. So it it almost sounds like um, since we can't push um, any other antivirus out, and you're saying we can't enforce any other antivirus. Uh so if you have an antivirus that can be deployed in, as an MSI, a standalone single MSI application, mm -hmm. we can deploy that using Intune, we just can't control it. Okay. And yeah. um, I don't know how much you know about Defender, we haven't done ta much testing with it, but if we set Defender to be, um, yeah, it looks like real-time protections on um, by, um, you have a policy for that. Will Defender play well if, um, like say we, even if we can't push it, if we give kind of like a best practice to parents saying, hey, go online, grab this free antivirus, um, yeah. uh, as far as you know, does it play well? Yeah, so Windows Defender is very, it does play very well with other antiviruses if you guys have that installed. Uh, I've done some specific testing with really large organizations that have various uh, virus policies pushed down to mm -hmm. their uh, devices and servers. And virtually all of them also use Defender. Some of them turn them off for some incompatibilities. Like I think Silence uh, doesn't play so well with Windows mm -hmm. Defender. Um, but for those situations, you can also just specifically set Defender exclusions if you need to set those on uh, like another antivirus's software. All right. And um, like we were saying earlier, uh, it sounds like eventually Intune is going to get the ability to push EXEs. Yes. So that will be something that's coming in the second half of this year. Okay, so that might be something we can look at um, eventually pushing, like in September, or once we're starting to push out the full one-to-one, -one, or maybe even next year. <laughs> okay, all right. So yeah. Um, so yeah, it looks yeah, it looks like so far what we have here with Defender Force, and that at this point, at least with a test group, giving parents the best practice and saying, hey go to this website, download, install this antivirus as an additional layer of protection. Yep. It sounds like that might be the way we are going to um, have to go. Yeah. And that, 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 I mean, I think that that should work, especially for a pilot. I mean, I think mm -hmm. these users will understand that, you know, we're working, that, we're working out the kinks, this yep. is a new program, et cetera. Um, and that should work. That should work fine. Yeah, we can see how, how that, that turns out. And it looks like everything is basically turned on in Defender. Yeah. For the Defender settings in here, in the policy that I do have, we're really only turning on real-time inspection and some of those, those network scanning. Um, a lot of the other options are left unconfigured. If you want to push those out and update those, you can. Okay. Um, I just The real-time monitoring and behavior monitoring are the two really important ones to keep on. All right, yeah. 